Hello guys, my name is Prince and this is my center. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Post your comments and questions on my social media handles and I'll respond to it. We are on the topic fractions and this is the first video on the topic fractions. What are the objectives that we look forward to achieving at the end of this topic? At the end of this topic, you should be able to distinguish between the types of fractions. You should be able to add, subtract, multiply and divide fractions. And you should be able to solve word problems involving fractions. So let's learn some basic terms and definitions about fractions. Common fractions or vulgar fractions are expressed in the form A over B where b is not equal to zero so when we say fractions they are numbers that are expressed in the form a over b when numbers are expressed in this form it's referred to as a common fraction or a vulgar fraction as we can see here now for a over b to be considered as a fraction b must not be zero because if b becomes zero, we are going to have a over zero, which will give us an undefined, an undefined expression. So fractions are expressed in their form a over b. Now, if fractions are expressed in the form a over b, the top part, which in this case is a, is called the numerator. Then b, which is the down part, is called the denominator. So whenever you have a fraction of the form a over b, so if you have a fraction like 1 over 2, 1 is called the numerator and b is called the denominator. We want to look at some examples of fractions. So examples are 1 over 2, 3 over 4, 2 over 3, 9 over 2. These are all examples of fractions. So in this case, 1 is the numerator, 2 is the denominator. Here, 3 is the numerator. Here, 4 is the denominator. 2 is the numerator here. 3 is the denominator here. Then when you come here, 9 is the numerator. And 2 is the denominator. We want to look at some types of fractions. Some types of fractions. The first one we are going to consider are what we refer to as proper fraction. A fraction with the numerator less than the denominator. So whenever you have a fraction where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, we say that you have a proper fraction. So for example, we have 1 over 2, where 1, which is the numerator, is less than the denominator. We have 5 over 7, where 5, which is the numerator, is less than the denominator. And we have 4 over 9, where 4, which is the numerator, is also smaller than the denominator. Another example of fraction we want to consider is what we call the improper fraction. A fraction with the numerator greater than the denominator. So improper fraction is the opposite of proper fractions. So for improper fractions, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So when you come here, 10 is bigger than 3. 7, which is the numerator, is bigger than 2, which is the denominator. And 19, which is the numerator, is bigger than 5, which is the denominator. We want to consider another one, which we are going to call missed numbers some books refer to as mixed fractions mixed numbers contain both whole numbers and fractional parts so they are fractions but you have whole number parts then you have the fractional parts the fractional parts are usually the fractional parts are proper fractions so here are some examples so when you come here we have two whole number one over three that is how this is read so when you come here, this is the fraction, 2 whole number 1 over 3. You see that we have a whole number part, which is 2. Then we have the fractional part, which is 1 over 3. Now you can see that this fractional part, which is 1 over 3, is a proper fraction because the numerator is less than the denominator. In the same way, when you come here, we have 15 whole number 2 over 5. So the whole number part is 15, and the fractional part is 2 over 5. When you come here, we have negative 4 whole number 1 over 2. So here, 4 whole number 1 over 2 is the fraction. The negative sign is giving an indication that the, the whole fraction here is negated. So we have negative 4 whole number 1 over 2. 
usually when we are working in fractions then the fraction is given to us as mixed numbers or mixed fractions we have to change them to improper fractions so that the work can be done so we are going to learn how to change mixed numbers or mixed fractions to improper fractions so changing mixed numbers to improper fractions remember some books refer to mixed numbers as mixed fractions so we are going to change 2 whole number 1 over 3 five, 15 whole number 2 over 5 negative 4 negative 4 whole number 1 over 2 and 7 whole number 3 over 4 to improper fractions now how is that done let's pick the first example 2 whole number 1 over 3 now if you want to change this to to improper fractions the first thing you need to do is to multiply the denominator here by the whole number part so you are going to multiply the denominator which is 3 3 in this case by the whole number part which is 2 now what would that give us we know that 3 times 2 will give us 6 then you add the results to the numerator so we add 6 the result that we get, get we add 6 to the numerator which is 1 and that is going to give us 7 then you divide what you get by the denominator here so you are going to have 7 over the denominator which is 3 so this is what we mean first multiply the numerator by the whole number part so the first multiply the denominator by the whole number part so multiply 2 by 3 now when you multiply 2 by 3 here is it you add your results what you get to the numerator which is plus 1 then you divide the whole thing by the denominator we know that 2 times 3 will give us 6 plus 1 over 3 so 2 whole number 1 over 3 is the same as 7 over 3 so you see we have converted this mixed numbers or mixed fraction to an improper fraction let's take the next example we have 15 whole number 2 over 3 so once again you multiply the denominator here with the whole number part so it's 5 times 15 then you add what you get to the numerator so plus 2 you divide the whole thing by the denominator so 5 times 15 will give us 75 75 plus 2 divided by 5 you know that 75 plus 2 is the same as 77 then we divide that by 5 let's do the next example now you can see from here that we have negative 4 whole number 1 over 2. Now whenever you have this, work as if the negative sign is not there, then negate the fraction in the long run. Now this is what I mean. So we are going to bring the negative sign here. So this one is equal to the negative sign. So you bring the negative sign in front of the fraction that you have. Then you work as if the negative sign was not there. So multiply 2 by 4. 2 times 4 plus you add the results to the numerator which is plus 1 so it's equal to negative you know that 2 times 4 is 8 then plus 1 divided by 2 so you are going to have negative 9 over 2 so you just bring the negative sign here and you work as if the negative sign was not there remember you are not going to multiply 2 by negative 4 but rather 2 by 4 then you add the results to 1 so you are going to have 2 times 4 which is 8 plus 1 divided by 2. We know that 8 plus 1 is 9, then over 2. Let's pick the last example. We have 7 whole number 3 over 4. So once again, you multiply the, denomin the denominator by the whole number part. So 4 times 7. You add the results to the numerator. So plus 3 divided by the de you add the results to the numerator, which is plus 3, divided by the denominator, which is 4. So we are going to have 4 times 7 will give you 8 plus 3 divided by 4. You know that 8 plus 3 is, will give us 31, then we divide by 4. So we have learned how to change mixed numbers to improper fractions. Sometimes after working for a particular question, the final answer we are going to have will be in improper fraction form as we have here usually when we have our answers in improper fraction form we represent our final answer as mixed numbers or mixed fractions so we are going to learn how to change mixed numbers 
improper fractions to mixed numbers. So in the previous slide, we learned how to change mixed numbers to improper fractions. This time, we are going to change improper fractions to mixed numbers. Now, when you have an improper fraction, this is how to change it to a mixed number. We can see from here that we have 7 over 2. So if you want to change this to a mixed number, this is what you do. First, divide 7 by 2. So let's try that on our calculator and see. So we are going to divide 7 by 2. So if you divide 7 by 2, you see that we are going to have 3.5. Now, we can see from here that we have the whole number part as 3 and the fractional part as 5. We are, we are interested in the whole number part here. So we are going to pick the whole number part. Now, the whole number part that we have is 3. So that will be the whole number part of the mixed fraction or the mixed number that we have. So we have 3. So it means that we are left with the numerator part and the denominator part. The denominator part is the denominator here, which is 2. So now, we have the whole number part and we have the denominator part. So how do we get the numerator? Multiply 3 by 2, as we were doing in the previous slide. So 3 times 2 will give us 6. Then subtract that from the numerator, which is 7. So you are going to have 6. 7 minus 6, which will give us 1. So, it means that if you convert 7 over 2 to mixed numbers or mixed fractions, you are going to have 3 whole number, 1 over 2. Once again, this is what you do. Divide 7 by 2 and pick the whole number part. That is going to be the whole number of the mixed fraction that you have. Then, we come here to find the fractional part. The denominator part of the fraction will be the denominator that you have here. So that denominator is 2. Multiply 2, the 2 that you have here, with the whole number part, which in this case is 3. You are going to get 6. Subtract that from the numerator here. So 7 minus 6 gives us 1. Let's pick another example. We have 10 divided by 3. So we are going to divide 10 by 3. Now let's try that on the calculator and see what we get. So we are going to divide 10, 10 by 3. Now when you divide 10 by 3, you see that we have 3.33333, so the 3 will continue to infinity. What you are interested in is the whole number part. So in this case, the whole number part is 3, as we can see. So you see that we have 3 point, the rest are decimals. We want the whole number, which is 3. So we pick that. Now, as soon as you have that whole number part, that whole number part is going to be the whole number for the mixed fraction. So our whole number is 3. Then we have to find the numerator and the denominator. The denominator will be the denominator of this fraction here, which is 3. Now we have the whole number part, we have the denominator part, so we are left finding the numerator. 3 times 3 will give us 9. Subtract 9 from 10, which is the numerator here. We know that 10 minus 9 will give us 1. So if you, if you convert 10 over 3 to mixed fraction or mixed numbers, you are going to have 3 whole number, 1 over 3. Let's pick some more examples. We have negative 59 divided by 5. Once again, work as if the negative sign is not there. Then you negate the eventual answer that you are going to have. So you are going to have... We are going to find 8, 98 divided by 5. This question says you should convert negative 98 divided by 5 to mixed numbers or mixed fractions. So we are going to find 98 divided by 5. So let's try that on our calculator and see. So 98 divided by 5. Now we can see from here that we are having 19.6. So 19 will be the whole number part. That is what we are interested in. So you pick the 19. 19 will be the whole number part. So you pick the 19. So we have 19. Now, we can see from here that we have the whole number part. So we are left with the numerator and the denominator. We already know the denominator to be 5. So we pick that denominator as 5. Now, to find the numerator, 
multiply 19 by 5 you know that if you multiply 19 by 5 you multiply 19 by 5 so 19 times 5 we are going to get 95 then you subtract 95 from 98 98 minus 95 is going to give us 3 now remember the whole thing was negative so you negate the eventual answer so you can see from here that if you convert negative 98 divided by 5 to mixed numbers you are going to have negative 19 whole number 3 over 5 let's pick the final example we have 293 divided by 17 and we are supposed to convert this to mixed numbers or mixed fractions so this is what you are going to do first find 297 293 divided by 17 so 293 93 divided by 17 and we know that that is going to give us 17.235 so what we are interested in is the whole number part so here the whole number part is 17 now if the whole number part is 17 it means that that whole number is going to be the whole number for the mixed fraction so 17 it means that we are left with finding the numerator and the denominator we know that the denominator here is going to be the denominator that we have here which is 17 so the whole number part is 17 the denominator of the fractional part is also 17 so to find the numerator multiply 17 by 17 you know that if you multiply 17 by 17 you are going to get 289 so 17 by 17 if you do that on our calculator 17 times 17 you are going to have 289 289 so after you have 289 we subtract 289 from the numerator here which is 293 so 293 minus 289 will give us 4 so it means that the numerator is going to be 4 the numerator is going to be 4 so if you convert 293 divided by 17 to mixed numbers we are going to have 17 whole number 4 over 17. thank you for watching this video pick more examples on converting from mixed numbers or mixed fractions to improper fractions and converting from improper fractions to mixed fractions or mixed numbers and try your hands on them using the same principles that we used in this video See you in the next video where we will learn how to add and subtract fractions. We are on the topic fractions and this is the second video on fractions. In the previous video, we learned some basic definitions about fractions and we looked at some types of fractions. We also considered how to change mixed fractions to improper fractions and improper fractions to mixed fractions or mixed numbers. In this video, we are going to learn how to add and subtract fractions so let's begin with we are being told to evaluate the following and we have been given some fractions to add and subtract now let's pick some examples and see how this is done so you solve each one of these questions so let's begin with the first one we are being told to add 1 over 2 to 2 over 5 now whenever you have a fraction like this the first thing that you have to do is to find the least common multiple of the denominators now this is what you mean you find the least common multiple of the denominators the denominators here are 2 and 5 so you find the LCM of 2 and 5 the least common multiple you know that if you are find the least common multiple of 2 and 5 you are going to get 10 so you list the multiples of 2 and the multiples of 5 then you find the least one among them whenever you are having a problem finding the LCM don't worry multiply the denominators and use it as the LCM 
after the whole thing you simplify so here multiply 2 by 5 and use it as the LCA so 2 times 5 will give us 10 use it then after you finish the whole thing then you simplify so from here we find the LCM of 2 and 5 you got 10 now you divide 2 by 10 you know that 10 divided by you divide 10 by 2 sorry so you take 10 which is the LCM you divide it by the denominator here which is 2 so 10 divided by 2 will give us 5 you multiply that by the numerator here which is 1 so we are going to have 10 divided by 2 which is 5 then times the numerator 1 you put that in one bracket then we already have the addition sign here so you bring that addition sign here then you move on to this part you take 10 you divide it by the denominator here which is 5 so 10 divided by 5 will give us 2 you multiply that by the numerator here which is 2 so you are going to have 2 times 2 you also put that in, in one bracket then you move on we know that 5 times 1 will give us 5 we already have the addition sign there so plus 2 times 2 will give us 4 divided by 10 then 5 plus 4 will give us 9 divided by 10 so you see we have our answer here in the simplest form so you move on now this is an example of a proper fraction because the numerator is less than the denominator let's move on to the next example this time we are having three different terms so we have 3 over 4 plus 7 over 8 plus 1 over 2 once again then first thing that you have to do is to find the least common multiple of the denominators so we have the denominators to be 4 8 and 2 if you list the multiples of 4 8 and 2 you see that the least one which is common um, the multiples common among them the least one will be 8 as i said if you are finding problems if you are finding it difficult to find the lcm multiply the denominators together so multiply 4 by 8 by by 2 and use it as the lcm then you simplify after us but if you're able to find the LCM of it, your answer that you get will be in the simplest form. That is why it is always easier to find the LCM. But if you are finding problem, just multiply the denominators and follow the same principle that you have. After that, you simplify your final answer. So here, our LCM is 8. So we are going to begin as we did for the previous example. 8 divided by 4 will give us 2. Then you multiply that by 3 so you are going to have 2 times 3 or 3 times 2 you already have the addition sign here so plus now 8 divided by 8 will give us 1 you multiply that by the numerator here which is 7 so we are going to have 1 times 7 then plus 8 divided by 2 will give us 4 you multiply your answer by 1 which is the numerator here so 4 times 1 so that is how it's done. 8 divided by 4 will give us 2. You multiply your answer by the numerator. So 8 times 2. 8 times 3. Sorry. Eight, sorry. 8 divided by 4 will give us 2. You multiply your uh, that by the numerator here, which is 3. So you are going to have 3 times 2 or 2 times 3. You bring the addition sign. 8 divided by 8 will give us 1. We multiply that by the numerator, which is 7. So 7 times 1. Then plus 8 divided by 2 will give us 4. We multiply that by the numerator, which is 1. So 4 times 1. Now, 3 times 2 will give us 6. 7 times 1 will give us 7. 4 times 1 will give us 4. So we have 6 plus 7 plus 4. You give us 17 you divide that by 8 now you can see that we have an improper fraction here so because we have an improper fraction here we must represent our final answer in a mixed number or mixed fraction so you convert 17 divided by 8 into mixed number or mixed fraction just as we learned in the previous video if you are converting 17 divided by 8 into mixed fraction you are going to have two whole number one divided by 8 if you want to understand how to do this, watch the previous video and you will get it. We move on to the next.
to the third example we have one whole number five over six plus three whole number seven over eight now you can see clearly from here that we have some missed numbers or missed fraction to begin the whole addition process the first thing that you have to do is to convert these missed numbers to improper fractions so that is what we are going to do you know in the previous video we learned how to convert missed numbers or missed fractions to improper fractions so if you convert one whole number 5 over 6 to improper fraction you get 11 over 6 you bring your addition sign you convert three whole numbers 7 over 8 to improper fraction you get 31 divided by 8 or 31 over 8 once again if you want to learn how this is this conversion is done watch the previous video or the first video on fractions and you get this into details now let's move on we have them in improper fractions so you find the lcm the lcm of 6 and 8 is 24. once again as i said if you are finding it difficult to find the lcm multiply 6, six and 8 sorry here the lcm of 6 and 8 is 24. if you are finding it difficult to find the lcm just multiply 6 by 8 and use that as the lcm then you simplify your final answer so we begin the whole process 24 divided by 6 will give us 4 we multiply 4 by the numerator here which is 11 then plus 24 divided by 8 will give us 3 we multiply 3 by the numerator here which is 31 we know that 4 times 11 will give us 44 3 times 31 will give us 93 divided by 24 44 plus 93 will give us 137 we divide that by 24 now we can also see from here that this is an example of an improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator so we finally we convert our answer to a missed number if you convert 137 divided by 24 into missed number or missed fraction you are going to have five whole number 17 over 24. If you watch the previous video, you will understand how this conversion was done. We have 3 over 4 minus 1 over 3. So, you are going to find the LCM of 4 and 3. We know that the LCM of 4 and 3 is 12. So, 12 divided by 4 will give us 3. You multiply that by the numerator here, which is 3. So, you are going to have 3 times 3. Now, this time here is negative, so minus 12 divided by 3 will give us 4. Then times the numerator here, which is 1, so 4 times 1 into another bracket. We know that 9 minus, we are going to have 3 times 3 will give us 9. Then minus 4 times 1 will give us 4. So you are going to have 9 minus 4, which is 5 divided by 12 now this is a proper fraction so we will leave our answer like that let's pick the final example we have five whole number one over three minus one whole number 11 over 12. so once again we will convert these to improper fraction now if you are converting five whole number one over three to improper fraction you have 16 divided by 3 because 3 times 5 will give us 15 you add that to 1 you get 16 divided by 3 if you convert one whole number 11 over 12 to improper fraction you are going to have 23 divided by 12 because 12 times 1 will give us 12 12 plus 11 will give us 23 divided by 12 so you find the lcm of 3 and 12 which is 12 so you are going to have 12 divided by 3 that will be 4 you multiply that by the numerator here which is 16 so 4 times 16 then you bring your negative sign then when you come here you have 12 divided by 12 which is 1 you multiply that by the numerator which is 23 so you have 4 times 16 will give us 64 minus 1 times 23 will give us 23 divided by 12 we have 64 minus 23 to give us 41 divided by 12. This is an improper fraction, so we will convert this to a mixed number, which is 3 whole number, 5 over 12. Thank you for watching this video.
Take more examples on addition and subtraction of fractions and follow the same principles that we used in this video. See you in the next video where we will learn how to multiply and divide fractions. In the previous video, we learned how to add and subtract fractions. In this video, we are going to learn how to multiply and divide fractions. So let's take some examples and see how this is done. We are being told to evaluate the flow and we have been given from question 1 up to question 5. So we take them one after the other and do the simplification or the evaluation. So we pick the first one. We have 14 divided by 15 times 5 divided by 21. Now, whenever you are being told to multiply fractions, the ultimate aim is that you have to multiply the, denom the denominator by the denominator and the numerator by the numerator. This is what I mean. The main thing that we are looking forward here is to add multiplying 14 by 15, 14 by 5, and 15 by 21. But usually, you will have some common factors in there so we can cancel out so that our final multiplication will give us our answer in the simplest form. So, before we multiply the, the numerators and the denominators, if we have common factors in it, we have to cancel them out. Remember that common factor on the numerator will cancel a common factor on the denominator. A common factor on the numerator can't cancel a common factor on the numerator. Rather, the numerators will cancel out those on the denominators and the denominators can also cancel out those on the numerators. So you check around and see if there are common factors in there. So for, for example, in this question, we can see that we have 5 on the numerator here, then we have 15 on the denominator here. We know that 5 is a factor of 15, so we can do some cancellation here. We have 14 on the numerator here, then we have 21 on the denominator here. We know that 7 can cancel 14, and at the same time, 7 can also cancel 21. So we can do some cancellations here. Okay, so let's begin the cancellation. Now, we know from here that 5 can cancel itself 1. Then 5 will cancel 15 3 times because 15 divided by 5 will be 3. Now, five, 7 can cancel 14 2 times because 14 divided by 7 is 2. Then 7 can also cancel 21 3 times. Now you can see from here that we've cancelled this to the simplest form, we've cancelled this to the simplest form, we've cancelled this to the simplest form, you've also cancelled this to the simplest form. Once again, 3 can't cancel 3 here because they are both denominators. So if we check, no numerator can cancel any denominator, so we proceed. So we can see that right now we have cancelled the 14 out to get 2, we've cancelled 15 out to get 3, we've cancelled 5 out to get 1, and we've cancelled 21 out to get 3. So everything is in its simplest form now, so we can do the multiplication. Now when you have it in its simplest form now, you multiply the numerator with the numerator, so 2 times 1, you divide that by multiplication of the denominators, the denominators so 3 times 3. We know that 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 3 is 9. Let's pick the next example. You can see from here that we have mixed numbers or mixed fractions. So the first thing we have to do is to convert them to improper fractions. So we convert 2 whole number 1 over 3 to improper fraction. So we have 2 times 3 which is 6 plus 1 which is 7. So 7 over 3. When you come here we have 2 times 1 which is 2 plus 1 which is 3. So we are going to have 3 over 2. Now we check if there are common factors on the numerator and denominator. We can see from here that we have 3 here, 3 can cancel itself 1, 3 can also cancel here 1. Now 2 and 7 can't cancel each other out, so they must be left like that. So we now have 7 divided by 1 times 3 has cancelled itself to 1, so 1 over 2. So we have 7 times 1, which is 7, then 1 times 2, which is 2. So you see our answer here is 7 over 2. Now because it is an improper fraction, we change our final answer to a mixed fraction. If you change 7 over 2 to mixed fraction, you are going to have 3 whole number 1 over 2. 
if you watch the first video you are going to understand how this conversion was done so this becomes our final answer let's pick an example on division so we have three whole number one over four divided by two whole number one over three so the next the next first thing that we have to do is to first convert the missed fraction or the missed numbers to improper fractions so we convert three whole number one over four and we convert two whole number one over three converting three whole number one over four we are going to have four times three which is 12 plus 1 13 divided by 4 so you're going to have 13 divided by 4 then we bring our division sign if you convert this you're going to have 3 times 2 which is 6 we add that to this one which is 7 so 7 divided by 3 as we have here now if you have division this is what you do you see this is on the left hand side and this is on the right hand side so what you do is that you keep what is on the left hand side so this is on the left then this is on the right you keep what is on the left hand side you keep this 13 over 4 you change the division sign to multiplication then you turn what is on the right hand side upside down so the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator I hope that is clear so you keep what is on the left hand side 13 divided by 4 then you change the division sign to multiplication then you turn what is on the right hand side upside down so the numerator becomes the denominator and the denominator becomes the numerator as we have here so from here we can proceed like we are doing multiplication so we check and see if there are common factors now you can see from here that there are no common factors so we multiply them straight away we can't cancel anything out because there are no common factors to use for the cancellation so we multiply 13 by 3, then we multiply 4 by 7. We know that that is going to give us 39 over 28. Now this is an example of an improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So you convert this to mixed numbers or mixed fractions, which will give us one whole number, 11 over 28. Let's pick the next example. We have... 2 over 5 divided by 4 now you can see from here that we have a fraction dividing a whole number you follow the same principle as you have been doing now remember that 4 when you have this number 4 4 is the same as 4 divided by 1 because 4 divided by 1 will give us 4 so because we are working in fractions we are going to change 4 to 4 divided by 1 so 2 divided by 5 2 over 5 divided by 4 is the same as 2 divided by 2 over 5 divided by 4 over 1 because 4 over 1 is 4 so we haven't changed anything now you follow the same principles for division keep what is on the left hand side which is 2 over 5 change the division sign to multiplication then turn this upside down so if you are turning this upside down 1 becomes the numerator then 4 becomes the denominator so if you turn this upside down, 1 becomes the numerator, 4 becomes the denominator. So we check and see if there are common factors. Yes, there are common factors. 2 can cancel itself 1 and cancel 4 2 times. So this time we have 1 over 5 times 1 over 4 is now 2 because we've cancelled it out. You multiply the numerator and the numerator, so 1 times 1 that will give us 1 times 1 will give us 1 then 5 times 2 which will give us 10 this is a proper fraction so we leave our answer in that form we take the last example 6 divided by 1 over 3 so we use the same principle keep what is on the left hand side what is on the left hand side is 6 change the division sign to multiplication then turn what you have here upside down so you do it upside down so you are going to have 1 over 3 then if you are turning that upside down that is you are reciprocating it 3 will be the numerator now 1 will be the denominator now so 3 divided by 1 is the same as 3 so you are going to have 6 times 3 which will give us 18 thank you so much for watching this video on multiplication and division of fractions. 
Take more examples and follow the same principles that we have used in this video. See you in the next video where we are going to take questions that involves more than one operation. So in the question, we are going to have either addition, subtraction, multiplication or division in the same question or more than one of these operations in the same question. We are on the topic fractions. In the previous video, we learned how to multiply and divide fractions. We have also learned how to add and subtract fractions. In this video, we are going to take questions on fractions where the question contains more than one operation. So we will learn how to do that. Now, if a, if a question contains more than one operation, that is either more than one of addition, subtraction, division or multiplication, we work in a certain order. That's why we have the order of operation here. So the point is telling us that when working problems involving fractions which have more than one of the following signs, you use what you call the board mass principle. You might be familiar with this principle. Now, this principle gives us an order in which we have to solve the question. Now, the order is as follows. What this, what this principle tells us that whenever you have a question which has more than one of these signs, that is more than one of addition, subtraction, division, or multiplication, if you have something in the bracket, you have to do brackets first. So the first B here stands for brackets. So the first B in board mass stands for brackets. Then after you've done what is in the brackets, you move on to off or multiplication. So in fractions, whenever you see off, we are talking about multiplication. So what it tells us that after you've done what is in the bracket, check and see if there is any multiplication or in this case off in the question, then you do the multiplication. Then, after that, you check and see if there are any divisions. Now, from the previous video, we, we saw that whenever you have a, multi a division, it's going to result in a multiplication. So here, the first thing you need to do is to check the brackets. Then you check and see if there are any multiplications. You do that. From there, you check and see if there are any divisions. You know that the division will give rise to a multiplication. So after the division, check and see if there's if there is any multiplication and do that one also. Now after you finish with that, you look at the addition. If there is any addition, do that. Then finally, you look at subtraction. If there is any subtraction, you do it. So whenever the questions involve more than one of these signs, the first thing you need to do is to check if there are any brackets. Perform the operation in the bracket. From there, you check if there are any multiplications, you do that. You check if there are any division, you do that. You check for multiplication again, you check for addition, then for subtraction. Now, the acronym board mass will help you to remember this very well. So it's bracket of division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Remember that the of in this case here represents multiplication. Let's take some examples. We are, we are supposed to evaluate the following. I have been given to us, then I, I. So we take them one after the other, then we do it. So we take the first question. We have one whole number 2 over 3 minus, then we have a bracket, one whole number 2 over th one whole number 3 over 4 divided by two whole number 5 over 8. So what board mass tells us is that whenever we are being given this, you see from here that we have subtraction and division in the same question so the principle can now be applied so it says that we should first tackle whatever is in the bracket so first tackle whatever is in the bracket so we go on to what is in the bracket but because we have missed numbers here you first convert all the missed numbers in the questions to, in the question to improper fraction so we convert all the missed numbers so you convert this one you convert that then you convert this so if you convert one whole number 2 over 3 to mixed number, you are going to have 5 over 3. Then the subtraction is already here. So you bring it, you bring the fraction. You convert one whole number 3 over 4, you are going to get 7 over 4. We have division here, so you bring the division. Then you convert two whole number 5 over 8, you are going to get 21 over 8. Now, after we have converted everything, 
board master is telling us that we should first deal with what is in the bracket. So this time, what is in the bracket? We have 7 divided by 4, 7 over 4 divided by 21 over 8 in the bracket. So first deal with that. So we are not going to touch this. Since it's outside the bracket, we are not going to touch any of this. So we are dealing with what is in the bracket. Now we have a division in the bracket. So we'll do it. So we have 7 divided by 4. We know that if you have division, you change the division sign to multiplication as we have it. Then you turn this upside down. So 8 becomes the numerator, 21 becomes the denominator as we learned in the previous video. So check and see if you can cancel anything out before we do the multiplication. You can see clearly from here that 4 can cancel 4, 4 can cancel itself 1 and cancel 8 2 times, 7 can cancel 1, 21 divided by 7 will give us 3. So we we'll proceed. We have 5 over 3 divided by 5 over 3 minus, then what is in the bracket? 7 is now gone, we have 1. 4 is now gone, we have 1. So 1 over 1 times. 8 is gone, we have 2. 21 is gone, we have 3. So we are going to have now 1 times 2 will give us 2. 1 times 3 will give us 3. So you see, we are, we are done with what is in the bracket. So the bracket is now gone. Then, board mass is telling us that after you finish with the bracket, so it's bracket off. Check if there's any multiplication. We don't have any multiplication here. The next one, it says check if there's any division. We don't have any division here. Then, multiplication again. We check if there's any multiplication. We do, once again, we don't have any multiplication. It says check if there's any addition. We don't have any addition. Then the last one it says check if there's any uh, subtraction. So you check for subtraction. We have subtraction. So we have 5 over 3 minus 2 over 3. We know that LCM of 3 and 3 is 3. So 3 divided by 3 will give us 1. 1 times 5 will be 5 minus 3 divided by 3 will give us 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So we are going to have 3. 5 minus 2 will give us 3. You are going to have 3 divided by 3, which is 1. So whenever you have the denominators of fractions being the same, so here we have 3 and 3, you can just straight away subtract the numerators since the LCM will be the same. So you can subtract the numerators. So you subtract 2 from 5. So 5 minus 2 divided by 3. You are going to have 3 over 3. Now 3 divided by 3 will give us 1. Let's pick another example. So we have one whole number, one over two, time one over three, sorry, times two whole number, one over four in one bracket, plus two whole number, one over two divided by five over six. So once again, board mass says that we should first deal with what is in the bracket. But because you are having missed numbers, change first change all the missed numbers to improper fashion. So we change one whole number, one over three, to get four over three. The multiplication sign is already there. We change two whole number one over four to get nine over four in one bracket, then the addition sign will come. We change two whole number one over three to five over two. Sorry, two whole number one over two to five over two. We bring your division sign, then five over six is already in its simplest form, so we leave it there. Then board mass says we should do what is in the bracket. So we'll tackle what is in this bracket, then what is in that bracket. So let's begin with the first bracket. Now we can see from here that it's multiplying. So we will check if there are common factors, then we cancel out. So we can see that 4 will cancel itself and cancel here. 4 divided by 4 give us 1. 4 divided by 4 give us 1. 3 will cancel itself 1 and cancel 9 3 times. So we are going to have 1 over 1 times 3 over 1 because 4 is now has cancelled itself, so we have 1. 3 has cancelled itself, we have 1. Three, 9 has cancelled itself, we have 3. Then two, 4 has cancelled itself, we have 1. So in that bracket, then plus, we come to this bracket. Once again, here is division. We know that if you have division, keep what is on the left hand side, which is 5 over 2. Change the division side to multiplication. Then turn this upside down, so 6 becomes the numerator. 5 becomes the denominator. 
Since it's multiplication, check and see if there are common factors. 5 can cancel itself here and cancel here. So we have 1, 1. 2 can cancel itself, 1. Cancel 6, 3 times. Because 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we move on. We know that we are going to have 1 times 3, which is the same as 3, divided by 1 times 1, which is the same as 1, then plus. Now when we come to this bracket, 5 is now 1, because it's cancelled. 2 is now 1, that's also cancelled, times 6 is now 3, 5 is now 1. So it's going to be the same as, we have 3 over 1 here, plus 1 times 3 will give us 3. 1 times 1 will give us 1. So we've simplified this also so the bracket is gone. We know that 3 divided by 1 is 3. 3 divided by 1 is 3. So you're going to have 3 plus 3. And 3 plus 3 will give us 6. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video where we'll take more questions on questions that involve more than one operations. In the previous video, we took questions on examples that involve more than one operation and used the principle of board mass to solve those examples. In this video, we are going to take more examples on such questions. So, let's begin with this. So, we are going to take two questions in this video. The first, which is I, and the second one, which is II. So, we are being told to evaluate the following expressions. So, we take the first expression. We have 2 whole number 1 over 3 plus 4 whole number 1 over 2 divided by 8 whole number 1 over 8. Now whenever you have an expression like this where you have the division sign as we have as we have seen here when you have whenever you have an expression like this as you have the division sign as we have seen here it is always easier to put the terms on top in bracket and the terms below also in a bracket but if the term is a single term like this you are going to leave it so we are going to put the two terms which is at the numerator side of this fraction this bigger fraction here we are going to put these two terms in one bracket then since this is just a single term we will leave it like that so we are going to put the numerator side, which is two whole number one over three plus four whole number one over two in, in a bracket then this sign will be the division then divided by 8 whole number 1 over 8, 1 over 5. So we can use the principle of board mass from here, of course. To begin with, since we have mixed numbers or mixed fractions here, we first have to convert all of them to improper fractions. So we convert 2 whole number 1 over 3 to get 7 over 3. Plus we convert 4 whole number 1 over 2 to get 9 over 2 divided by we convert 8 whole number 1 over 5 to get 41 over 5 so we move on to the addition since it says that always do what is in the bracket first now what is in the bracket is addition so we are doing what is in the bracket first so you find the lcm of 3 and 2 which is 6 so you are going to have 6 divided by 3 which is 2 then time the numerator here which is 7 plus we are going to have 6 divided by 2, which is 3, times the numerator here, which is 9, or divided by 6. So remember, we are doing what is in this bracket. That is why we have this bigger bracket here. Then divided by 41 over 5. Now, since this is not part of the bracket, you are going to leave it alone until it gets to its 10. So we are now tackling what is in the bracket. We know that 2 times 7 will give us 14, plus 3 times 9 will give us 27, divided by 6. Then divided by 41 divided by 5. So 14 plus 27 will give us 41 divided by 6. Now we know that since this is division, we are going to change the division to multiplication. Then we turn this upside down. So 5 will be the numerator, 41 will be the denominator. Now we can see clearly from here that 41 can cancel 41 since there are, there are common factors. So 41. 41 will cancel itself 1, cancel 41, 1. So we are going to have 1 times 5, which will give us 5, then 6 times 1, which will give us 6. Now, since this is in its simplest form, here is where we will leave our answer. Let's take the next example on this. 
So we have two whole number seven over eight times one whole number one over five divided by eight minus two whole number one over four. So once again, as I said, whenever you have this, it's always easier to put what is on top in a bracket as we have here, then you put what is below. If it's more than a term, you put that one also in a bracket. So here, since we have two terms, which is 8 and 2 whole number 1 over 4, you are going to put those ones also in a bracket. So you begin by changing the mixed numbers to improper fractions. So we change 2 whole number 7 over 8, we are going to get 2 into 3 over 8, then times we will change one whole number 1 over 5, that will give us 6 over 5. Then we already have the division sign here. 8 is the same as 8 over 1. 8 over 1 is 8. Then minus, we change two whole number 1 over 4, that is giving us 8, sorry, 9 over 4. So here, what we have in the bracket here, Boardman says that always do what is in the brackets first. So what is in the brackets here is 23 over 8 times 6 over 5. So we check and see if we can do some cancellations. So we will check and see if we can do some cancellations here. We know that 2 can cancel 6 3 times. It will cancel 4, 8, 4 times. Since 6 divided by 2 give us 3 and 4 divided, 8 divided by 4 will give us 8 divided by 2 give us 4, sorry. So we check and see if there are any more common factors there aren't. Here is subtraction, so we are going to do for the subtraction. So here we have now cancelled, so we have 23 here. 4 has now been cancelled to, 8 has now been cancelled to 4. 6 has been cancelled to 3, then we have the 5 here. So divided by, you come to this bracket and you perform the division, the subtraction in this bracket. So LCM of 4 and 1 is 4. If you are, As I said, if you are finding it difficult, just multiply the denominators and use it as the LCM. So multiply 4 by 1, you are going to get 4 and use it as the LCM. 4 divided by 1 will give us 4. Then you multiply that by the numerator. So 4 divided by 1 will give us 4. You multiply that by the numerator. So you can see from here that 4 divided by 1 you give us 4, you multiply that by the numerator, you get 8, then minus 9, 4 divided by 4 will give us 1, you multiply that by the numerator here, you are going to get 9. Okay, so I'm going to take this away. So, 4 divided by 1 will give us 4 times 8, we have that here, 4 times 8. 4 divided by 4 give us 1, you multiply that by 9. So you are going to have 9 times 1. So when you come to this bracket, you are going to multiply the numerator and the numerator. Then you multiply the denominator and the denominator. So you are going to have 69 divided by 20. Because 23 times 3 will give us 69. 4 times 5 will give us 20. Then divided by 4 times 8 will give us 32. 9 times 1 will give us 9. So you're going to have 69 over 20 divided by 23 over 4. So 69 over 20 divided by 23 over 4. So from here, you know that since we have the division sign here, we are going to change the division sign to multiplication and turn what is on the right-hand side upside down. So we leave what is on the left-hand side, which is 69 divided by 20. We leave it there. We change the, the division sign to multiplication, then we turn this upside down, we are going to have 4 over 23. Now we know from here that we can cancel some common factors out, so 4 will cancel itself 1, and cancel 25 times, 23 will cancel itself 1, and it's going to cancel 69, 3 times. So you can see from here that this is now 3 over 5 times 4 has cancelled itself 1, 23 has cancelled itself 1, so 1 over 1. Now 3 over 5 times 1 over 1 will give us 3 over 5. It says 3 times 1 will be 1 and 5 times 1 will also be 5. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video where we will take questions on using fractions to solve practical problems.
we are still on the topic fractions and this is the sixth video on fractions in the previous videos we've learned how to add subtract multiply and divide fractions in this video and the subsequent ones we are going to learn how to solve practical problems involving fractions we are going to pick one example in this video the question is a rod is 10 whole number 7 over 8 meters long. Yao cuts 4 over 9 of it for a job. What is the length of the remaining rod? So, we are going to use some drawings to illustrate what this question wants us to find. So, there is this rod here. And the rod is 10 whole number 7 over 8 meters long. So, the length of this rod that we have here the length of this rod is 10 whole number 7 over 8 meters long. Now, the question continues that Yao cuts 4 over 9 of it for a job. So, he cuts part of this rod for a job. So, let's assume that this is the rod that he cuts. This rod. This rod that we have here. This is the rod that Yao cuts. This. This one. Now, this was the original rod, which is 10 whole number 7 over 8 meters. He cuts this one for a job. And the length of the rod that he cuts was given to us in the question. The question tells us that it is 4 over 9 of the original rod. So, it's going to be 4 over 9 of the original rod we know that the length of the original rod was 10 whole number 7 over 8 meters now you see that after this there will be a remaining rod so after he cuts part of this rod for a job there will be a remaining rod the question is telling us to find the length of this remaining rod so you can see from here that we have the length of the original rod to be 10 whole number 7 over 8. Now we know the length of the rod that he cut off. So all that we need to do is to compute for the length of the rod that we cut off. Subtract it from the original rod, then we will have what is remaining. So to begin with, we know that the length of the remaining rod will be the length of the original rod or the length of the rod that was given us minus the length of the rod that Yao cut off so that you get the length of the remaining rod as we saw in the illustration in the previous slide the first thing the first part of the equation we need to find is the length of the rod so you see from here this is the equation we are using to solve the question we want the length of the remaining rod so it's telling us that to find the length of the remaining rod we need to find the length of the rod then the length of the rod that was cut off so we find the length of the original rod. The question given to us to be 10 whole number 7 over 8. Now, this is a missed number of missed fraction. So we need to convert this to an improper fraction. So we convert 10 whole number 7 over 8 to improper fraction. And we are having 87 over 8 meters. Then the next part of the equation is that we need to find the length of the rod that was cut off. The question told us that the length of the rod that was cut off is 4 over 9 of the length of the original rod. We know that the length of the original rod is 10 whole number 7 over 8, which we have found to be 87 over 8 meters. So, the length of 4 over 9 of the length of the original rod will be 4 over 9 times 87 divided by 8 meters. Remember we said that in previous videos, we said that whenever you see off in fractions or whenever you see off in this case, off stands for multiplication. Remember board mass, bracket of division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. Off there means multiplication. So 4 over 9 of the original length means that 4 over 9 times the original length which is 87 divided by 8 meters. So from here, we can simplify. So after we, we do this simplification, so if you want to do the simplification here, you know that you have to cancel some terms out. So you do the cancellation and you are going to have 
29 over 6 meters. Now we have found the length of the rod, which is 87 over 8 meters. We have found the length of the rod that was cut off, which is 29 over 6 meters. So if you want to find the length of the remaining rod, it is going to be 87. The length of the remaining rod is going to be 87 over 8 minus 29 over 6. Since the length of the rod is 87 over 8 and length of the remaining rod is 29 over 6. So from here we find the LCM. LCM of 8 and 6 is 24. So we are going to have 24 divided by 8 to give us 3. You multiply that by the numerator which is 87 in one bracket then minus since we have the negative here 24 divided by 6 give us 4 times the numerator which is 29 so 4 times 29 another bracket 3 times 87 will give us 261 minus 4 times 29 will give us 116 you divide the whole thing by 24 261 minus 116 will give us 145 divided by 24. Now you can see from here that this, uh, this is an example of an improper fraction. So since it's our final answer, we are going to represent that in a mixed number or mixed fraction. And when you do that, you are going to get 6 whole number 1 over 24. So we can see that the length, therefore the length of the remaining rod is 6 whole number 1 over 24 meters so this was the length of the original road 87 over 8 meters then he cuts 29 over 6 meters out of it and the remaining one is 6 whole number 1 over 24 meters thank you for watching this video see you in the next video where we'll take another question on solving practical problems involving fractions. We are still on the topic fractions. In the previous video, we saw an example on pract solving practical problems involving fractions. In this video, we are going to take another question and see how to solve it. So let's look at the question. What he has a two whole number, one over four meter length of PVC pipe. He uses 2 over 3 of it for a job. What length of the pipe is left? That is A. B. If he uses 1 over 8 of the remainder for another job, how much of the original is left? So let's try and understand the question in this case. We are going to use these illustrations to understand the question. Now, what he had this original pipe in his hand? And the question told us that it's two whole number one over four meters long. Then he uses some part of it for a job. So let's use this pipe which has been illustrated, illustrated with short dashes as the pipe that he used for a job. Then the first question is trying to tell us to find the length of pipe that remained after he finished the first job. So this was the original pipe that he had. He cuts this part of it for a job so you see that there will be a remaining pipe the question is trying to tell us to find that so that was what his first job from there he took on another job that is a second job with the same pipe so you can see that for the second job at the beginning of the job the length of pipe that what he will have will be the length of pipe that was remaining after the first job because for this he has already cut this part out of it and this was what was remaining so at the beginning of the second job this was the length of pipe that he will be having the length of pipe that remained after the first job for the second job too he cut part, part of this pipe for another job so you see that from here too there will be another remaining pipe so there will be a remaining pipe after the second job so here's what the question is trying now. here's what the question is telling us to find what he had this pipe, he cut this part out of it. So A is trying to tell us to find what remained after the first job. Then at the beginning of the second job, what you have what remained after the first job. He now cuts part of that pipe also for another job. So the B is also trying telling us to find what remained after 
the second job. So let's begin with A. We know that the length of the pipe left after the first job will be the length of the pipe minus length of the pipe used for the first job. That is understandable, right? The length of the pipe that remained after the first job will be the length of the original pipe, which is this, minus the length of pipe that he used for the job. That will be the length of the pipe that remained after the first job. So let's proceed. So from here, if you want to find the length of the pipe that remained after the first job, we first have to find the length of the pipe. Then we find the length of the pipe that he used for the first job. The question told us that the length of the pipe was two whole number, one over four meters. This is a missed fraction or a missed number. So we convert that into an improper fraction and it's going to be nine over four meters. So we found, we found the length of the pipe. Now let's move on to the second part. It says that we should find the length of the pipe used for the first job. The question told us that, so from here we can see that the length of the pipe that what, what he had in the beginning was 9 over 4 meters. This is the length of the original pipe. Then, the length of the pipe he used for the job, for the first job, was 2 over 3 of the original length. 2 over 3 of the original length. You've come to see that the original length is 9 over 4. That's the length of the original pipe that he had. So the length of the pipe he used for the first job will be 2 over 3 of 9 over 4 meters. From the previous video, we said that whenever you see off like this, it means it's multiplication. So you are going to have 2 over 3 times 9 over 2. So from here, we can see that 2 will cancel itself 1 and cancel 4 2 times. 3 will cancel itself 1 and cancel 9 3 times. So if you do this simplification, we are going to have 3 over 2 meters. So what he had 9 over 4 meters as the original pipe, then he used 3 over 2 meters for the first job. So from here, we found the original length, which is 9 over 4 meters. Then we, we have been able to find what he used for the first job, which is 3 over 2 meters. So if you want the remaining pipe at the end of the first job or after the first job, it's going to be the original length minus what he used for the first job, which is 3 over 2 meters. So from here, we know that the LCM, we find the LCM and we do the simplification. LCM of 4 and 2 is 4. So you are going to have 4 divided by 4, which is 1, times the numerator, 9. We have negative here, so minus 4 divided by 2, which is 2, times the numerator, which is 3. We know that 9 times 1 will give us 9, 2 times 3 will give us 6, divided by 4, as we have here. 9 minus 6 will give us 4. So 9 minus 6 will give us 3, sorry, divided by 4. So we can see from here that after what he finished the first job, after the first job, the length of pipe that he had after the first job is 3 over 4 meters. So we move on to the second job. Now what he has finished the first job, so we move on to the second job. So before what he started the second job, this was the length of pipe that he had, 3 over 4 meters, because that is the length of pipe remaining after the first job. Then again, he cut part of this 3 over 4 meters for another job, which is the second job. So the question is telling us to find the length of pipe remaining after the second job. Now we can see from here that if you want to find the length of pipe remaining after the second job, it's going to be the length of pipe after the first job, which is this, minus what he cut out of this for the second job. So minus length of pipe used for the second job. So this is the length of pipe after the first job. This is the length of pipe we used for the second job. So if you wonder what was remaining, we have to find length of pipe used for the second job and subtract it from this so that you will find what is remaining, what was remaining after the second job. From this equation, we need to find the length of pipe after the first job. We already know that to be 3 over 4 meters. So what is left now is to find the length of pipe he used for the second job. The question told us that the length of pipe what he used for the second job is 
1 over 8 of the length of pipe after the first job. Remember the question said, you use 1 over 8 of the remainder. The remainder is the length of pipe after the first job. So, we are going to have 1 over 8 of the remainder or the length of pipe after the first job, which is 3 over 4. You've seen that whenever you have something of another thing, the of there means that it's multiplication. So, we are going to have 1 over 8 times the length of pipe remaining after the first job, which is 3 over 4 meters. So, from here, we don't have any common factors to cancel. So, 1 will multiply 3, we have 3. 8 will multiply 4, we have 32 meters. So, this is the length of pipe used for the second job. So, for the second job, he used 3 over 32 meters for the second job. So, if you want to find the length of pipe remaining after the second job or the amount of the original pipe left, it's going to be the length of pipe after the first job minus length of pipe used for the second job, which is 3 over 4 minus 3 over 32. LCM of 4 and 32 is 32. So, you are going to have 32 divided by 4, which is 8. You multiply that by the numerator, which is 3. So, 8 times 3. We have negative here, so minus 32 divided by 32 give us 1 times the numerator, which is 3. So, we have 1 times 3 here. 8 times 3 will give us 24. Then minus 1 times 3 will give us 3. We have 21 divided by 32. Since 24 minus 3 will give us 21, then we have 32 here. So we can see from here that the amount of the original pipe left after the second job was 21 over 32 meters. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video where we will take another question on solving practical problems involving fractions. We are on the topic fractions. In the previous video, we took an example on solving practical problems involving fractions. In this video, we are going to take another example on solving practical problems involving fractions. So let's look at this example. Mr. Danso withdrew some money from his bank account. He gave 1 over 2 of it to his son and 1 over 3 of it to his daughter. If he had 500 Ghana CDs left, how much did he take from the bank? So, Mr. Danso went to the bank and took some money. He gave 1 over 2 of it to his son and 1 over 3 of it to his daughter. After doing that, he had 500 Ghana CDs left on him. So, you want to know the amount of money he withdrew from the bank. Now, to begin, since we don't know the amount of money he withdrew from the bank, and that is the first thing that we want to find, we are going to represent the amount of money he took with a variable. So, you are going to say we will let S be the amount of money Mr. Danso withdrew from the bank. To represent that with the variable x. Then, we know that after giving the money to his children, so the amount left after giving money to his children is 500 Ghana cities. We have that in terms of actual money. Now, to be able to find the amount of money he withdrew from the bank, which is x, so in this case, to be able to find the amount of money he withdrew from the bank, which is x, we have been given the amount of money left after he gave money to his children to be 500 Ghana cities in terms of actual money. We need to find the amount of money left after he gave money to his children in terms of fractions. Then we can equate what we have in fractions to what we have in terms of actual money so that we will be able to find X. So that's our main goal. We have been given the amount of money he gave to the amount of money left after he gave money to his children to be 500 Ghana cities in terms of actual money. So we are going to start from there. Then we will look for the amount of money left after he gave money to his children in terms of fractions. Then we can equate that to this. We know that the amount of money left after giving money to his children will be the amount he withdrew from the bank minus the amount he gave to his children, right? 
So if you want the amount of money left after giving money to the student, it's going to be the amount he withdrew from the bank minus the amount he gave to his children. We already know the amount he withdrew from the bank to be X in this case. So what we have to find is the amount of money he gave to his children. Now if you're able to compute for this, we can equate this whole thing here to 500 Ghana cities. So we are going to look for the fraction form of this. So let's begin by finding the amount of money he gave to his children, since we already know the amount he withdrew from the bank to be X. If you want to find the amount of money he gave to his children, it's going to be the amount of money he gave to his son plus the amount of money he gave to his daughter. So let's first find the amount of money he gave to his son. The question told us that he gave 1 over 2 of the money to his son. So it's 1 over 2 of what he withdrew from the bank, which is x. We know that 1 over 2 of x is the same as 1 over 2 times x, which, is, which will give us x over 2. Now, this is what we mean. You can see from here that 1 over 2 of x will give us 1 over 2 times x but we know that what, because we have x here on its own is the same as x over 1 so 1 will multiply x to give us x 2 will multiply 1 to give us 2 so that is why 1 over 2 x is giving us x over 2 so we found the amount of money he gave to his son in terms of fractions let's find the amount of money he gave to his daughter he gave 1 over 3 of the money to his daughter. So we are going to have 1 over 3 of x. Remember, x is the amount of money he withdrew from the bank. So this is going to give us 1 over 3 of x. We know that 1 over 3 x will give us x over 3. So we have found the amount of money he gave to his son. We have found the amount of money he gave to his daughter. So if you want to find the amount of money given to his children, it's going to be the amount of money he gave to his son plus the amount of money he gave to his daughter. What he gave to his son was x over 2. What he gave to his daughter was x over 3. So we we'll continue as we have been doing. We find the LCM. LCM of 2 and 3 is 6. So 6 divided by 2 will give us 3. 3 times the numerator here, x, will give us 3 times x, which is 3x. Then plus 6 divided by 3 will give us 2. 2 times the numerator, which is x, will give us 2 times x, which is 2x. If you watch the video on algebra, addition of algebra, you will see that 3x plus 2x is the same as 5x. Since we are going to add the coefficients, so we add 3 to 2 we are getting 5 then you pick one of the variables since they are like so you pick x so you are going to have 5x all over 6 so you can see from here that we now have the amount of money he gave to his children so if you want in previous slide we have said that the amount of amount of money left after giving some money to his children is equal to the amount he withdrew from the bank minus the amount he gave to his children we know that the amount he gave to his he withdrew from the bank as x the amount he gave to his children we have found out to be 5x over 6 so from here we can continue with the simplification we know that x is the same as x over 1 so we have x over 1 minus 5x over 6 the lcm of 5, 1 and 6 is 6 so you have 6 divided by 1 which is 6 Times the numerator here, which is x, so we are going to have 6 times x to be the same as 6x. We have the subtraction, so minus 6 divided by 6 will give us 1. 1 times the numerator, which is 5x, will give us 1 times 5x, which is the same as 5x. From algebra, we know that 6x minus 5x will give us x, so we have x over 6. So you can see from here that we have the amount of money left after giving some money to his children as 6 over x over 6. So in terms of fractions, the amount of money left after giving some money to his children is x over 6. In terms of actual money, 
The amount of money left after giving some money to his children is 500 Ghana cities. So you can see that both of these are amount of money left after giving money to his children. So we can equate them. So we will create what we have in terms of fractions to what we have in terms of actual money. So it's going to be x over 6 is equal to 500. If you look watch the video on solving linear equations, you will see that to simplify here, we multiply both sides by 6. So you multiply x over 6 by 6, you multiply 500 by 6. So from here, 6 will cancel 6. So you are going to have 6 will cancel 6. So you are going to have this place to be x. 500 times 6 will give us 3,000. 3, so we've now found x. Remember, x is the amount of money he withdrew from the bank. So we can say that, therefore, Mr. Danso withdrew 3,000 Ghana cities from the bank. So try on hands on finding the amount of money he gave to his son in terms of actual money, then the amount of money he gave to his daughter in terms of actual money. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video where we will take another example on solving practical problems involving fractions. We are on the topic fractions. In the previous video, we took an example on solving practical problems involving fractions. In this video, we are going to take another example on solving practical problems involving fractions. So let's look at the question in this example. Kwesi spent 1 over 5 of his monthly salary on food, 1 over 2 of the remaining on rent, and 1 over 4 of hostel remained on fuel. If he still had 240 Ghana cities left, A. Find his monthly salary. B. How much did he spend on food? C. How much did he spend on rent? So the question is telling us that Kwesi, who is probably a monthly worker or a government worker, took his monthly salary and he spent 1 over 5 of it on food. Then he spent 1 over 2 of the remaining, what remained after he has spent on food, he spent 1 over 2 of that on rent. Then what remained after he has spent on rent, he spent 1 over 4 of, of that on fuel. Then after the whole thing, he still had 240 Ghana cities left on him. So we are being told to A, find his monthly salary, B, find how much he spent on food, and C, we will find how much he spent on rent. So let's begin. Once again, since we don't know his monthly salary, and that is the main thing we have to look for here, we represent that with a variable Y. So we say that let Y be Kwesi's monthly salary. Then we know that the amount left after spending on fuel is 240 Ghana cities. So after spending on fuel, he still had 240 Ghana cities left on him. So now, our main goal is that since 240 Ghana cities is the amount left after spending on fuel, this is in terms of actual money, since we have 240 Ghana cities here. We need to find the amount left after spending on fuel in terms of fractions so that we can equate that to the amount of money left after spending on fuel in terms of actual money. Remember in the previous video we saw that whenever you have something like this, what has been given to you in the question, you find that in terms of fraction, then you equate it to that. Here what has been given to us is the amount of money left after spending on fuel. We know that to be 240 Ghana cities. So you find the amount of money left after spending on fuel in terms of fractions, then we equate that to this. So let's begin. The question told us that Kwesi spent 1 over 5 of his monthly salary on food. So from here we can see that the amount he spent on food is 1 over 5 of his monthly salary. We have now let his monthly salary be y, so you know that this will give us 1 over 5 of y. 1 over 5 of y will give us 1 over 5 times y, which is the same as y over 1. Then this will give us y over 5. 
since you have 1 times y to give us y, 5 times 1 to give us 5. Now, after spending on food, there will be a remainder. The remainder after spending on food will be his monthly salary minus what he spent on food. Because he had his monthly salary, he spent 1 over 5 of it on food. So that was his first expenditure. He spent 1 over 5 of the monthly salary on food. So if you want the remainder after that, it's going to be his monthly salary minus the amount he spent on food. His monthly salary is Y. The amount he spent on food is Y over 5. So Y minus Y over 5. We do the computation here. We know that Y is the same as Y over 1, then minus Y over 5. The LCM is 5. 5 divided by 1 is 5 times y will give us 5y minus 5 divided by 5 is 1 times y will give us y. From addition and subtraction of algebraic expressions, we know that 5y minus y will give us 4y divided by 5. So this is the amount left after spending on food in terms of fractions. Now the question went on to say that he spent one over two of the remainder on rent. What remainder? The remainder is the amount left after spending on food. Remember, he did not spend one over two. He did not spend one over two of the monthly salary. He spent one over two of the remainder. The remainder in this case is the amount left after spending on food. So, one over two of the remainder after spending on food is what he spent on rent. So if you want what you spent on rent, it is 1 over 2 of the remainder after spending on food. So 1 over 2 of, we know that the remainder after spending on food is 4y over 5. So from here, we have 1 over 2 times 4y over 5. So 2 will cancel itself 1 and cancel 4 2 times. So from here, we know that we have 1 over 1 times. Since 4 has been cancelled to 2, we have 2y over 5. And this will give us 2y over 5. So, the amount he spent on rent is 2y over 5. Now, after spending this, there will still be a remainder. The remainder in this case will be the remainder after spending on food minus the amount he spent on rent. Now, this is what it means. You see, we can see from here that this is the amount he spent on rent. This is the amount, the remainder after spending on food, 4y over 5. The remainder after spending on food is 4y over 5. So actually, this is the money he has left after spending on food. So that is what he has in, in hand. Then, from here, we have seen that he spent 2y over 5 of that on rent. So if you want the remainder, what is remaining? It is what he had in hand before paying for the rent, which is the remainder after spending on food, minus what he spent on rent. So, what, is, what he had in hand after spending on food was 4y over 5. What he spent on rent was 2y over 5. So, if you want the remainder after spending on rent, it's going to be 4y over 5 minus 2y over 5. So, from here, you find the LCM 5 and 5. The LCM is going to be 5, obviously. So, 5 divided by 5 will give us 1 times 4y, which is 4y. Then minus 5 divided by 5 will give us 1 times 2y, which is 2y. So, 4y minus 2y from algebra, we know that to be 2y over 5. So, after spending on rent, this is the amount he has in his hand. So this is the amount he has in his hand before moving on to his next expenditure, which is fuel. So the amount spent on fuel, he says that it is one over four of what still remained. What still remained after he has spent on rent, which is two y over five. So the amount spent on fuel is one over four of what still remains after he has spent on on rent, which is. 1 over 4 of the remaining after spending on rent. We know that the remainder after spending on rent is 2y over 5. So, the amount spent on fuel is 1 over 4 of 2y over 5. 2 cancel itself 1 and cancel 4 2 times. So, we have 1 over 2 times. 2 is cancelled. So, 2 over 5. 
and this will give us y over 10. So from here we have seen that the amount after spending on rent is 2y over 5. So that was what he had in hand before coming to spend on fuel. Then he spent y over 10 on fuel. So if you want what is left, it's going to be the amount after spending on rent, which is 2y over 5. That was what he had in hand. Minus the amount he spent on fuel, which is y over 10. So you are going to have 2y over 5 minus y over 10. So we find the LCM of 5 and 10, which is 10. 10 divided by 5 will give us 2. 2 times 2y will give us 4y. Then minus 10 divided by 10 will give us 1 times y will give us y. 4y minus y will give us 3y. Then divided by 10. So we can see from here that we have been able to find the amount of money left after spending on fuel. Remember in the question we saw that the amount of money left after spending on fuel was 240 Ghana cities. We have been able to find that in terms of fractions. So in terms of fractions, the amount of money left after spending on fuel is 3y over 10. In terms of actual money, the amount of money left after spending on fuel is 240 Ghana cities. So we can equate both of them. So we will equate 3y over 10 to 240. We multiply both sides by 10. So it's going to be 10 times 3y over 10. So as you can see here, we are going to have 10 times 3y over 10. So this is going to be multiplied by 10. So 10 times 3y over 10. Then we multiply this side also by 10. Now from here you will see that 10 will cancel 10 so you are going to have 3y to be equal to 240 times 10 so you divide both sides by 3 if you watch the video on solving linear equations you understand why you are doing this so you divide the side by 3 you divide the side by also 3 so 3 will cancel 3 you have y 240 times 10 will give us 2400 divided by 3 so y will give us 800 so we can say remember that y is the amount quesis monthly salary so you can say that quesis monthly salary is 800 ghana cities so the main thing that you have to look for here is to look at what the question gave you in terms of actual money here it is the amount left after spending on fuel then you find that in terms of fractions and you quit both of them so this is the A part of the question. The B part tells us to find the amount of money he spent on food. Now we know that for the amount of money he spent on food in terms of fractions is 5y over y over 5 as we saw in previous example. y over 5 is the amount of money left he spent on food in terms of fractions. But this time you don't need it in terms of fractions because you have already found y in terms of actual value and you know that y is 800 so you are going to have 800 divided by 5 which is 160 so we can see that Kwesi spent 160 Ghana cities on food then the question told us to find the amount of money he spent on rent in terms of fraction the amount of money he spent on rent is 2y over 10 you have found y to be 800 so you place y with 800 so you are going to have two times here was two times y so it's going to be two times 800 divided by 500 two times 800 will give us 1600 divided by 500 1600 divided by 500 will give us 320 so you can see that Kwesi spent 320 ghana cities on rent try and use this same principle to find the amount of money he spent on fuel. Now remember, if you add the amount of money he spent on fuel to the amount of money he spent on rent to the amount of money he spent on food and you subtract that from his monthly salary, you are supposed to get 240 Ghana cities since that is what the question told us. See you in the next video and thank you so much for watching this video. In the next video, we are going to take another example on solving practical problems involving fractions. We are on the topic fractions and this is the last video on fractions.
in previous videos, we've seen examples on how to solve practical problems involving fractions. In this video, we are going to take the last example on how to solve problems involving fractions. So let's look at the question in this video. Kweku spent 1 over 2 over 11 of his weekly allowance on food. 3 over 8 of the remainder on rent and 1 over 9 of hostel remained on books. If he still had 10 Ghana cities left, find his monthly, his allowance per week. The amount is spent on rent. The amount is spent on books. So this example is similar to what we saw in the previous video. Kweku spent 2 over 11 of his weekly allowance on food. Then after that, what remained, he spent 3 over 8 of what remained on rent. Then what remained after that, he spent 1 over 9 of it on books and still had 10 Ghana cities left. So we are supposed to find his weekly allowance or his allowance per week. Then we will find the amount he spent on rent. Then we find the amount he spent on books. So from here, as we have been doing in previous videos, the first thing that we have to do is to let a variable represent the weekly allowance since that is the main thing that we have to find. So we are going to let A represent the weekly allowance. We know in the question that the amount of money left after spending on books is 10 Ghana cities. So we need to find the amount of money left after spending on books in terms of fractions. Now you can see that the 10 Ghana cities here is in terms of actual money. So we have to find the amount of money left after spending on books in terms of fractions so that we can equate that to this. To begin with that, we first need to find the amount of money spent on food. The question told us that it is 2 over 11 of the weekly allowance. The weekly allowance is A. So before Kweku started spending on food, before he started the whole expenditure, he had A on him. That is, the amount of money he had was A, his weekly allowance. So he spent 2 over 11 of that on food. Now, 2 over 11 of A will give us 2 over 11 times A over 1. A over 1 is the same as A. So you are going to have 2A over 11. So this is the amount of money he spent on food. Now after spending on food, the remainder will be the weekly allowance. That is what he started with before spending on food minus what he spent on food. We know that the weekly allowance is A. So if you subtract that from what he spent on food, which is 2A over uh, 2a over 11 you are going to have a minus 2a over 11 a is the same as a over 1 so minus 2a over 11 the lcm will be 11 so 11 divided by 1 is 11 times a will give us 11a 11 divided by 11 is 1 times 2a will give us 2a so we have 11a minus 2a from algebra we know that that is 9a over 11 so, after spending on food, this is the amount that Kwesi have on him. This is the amount that he has on him. 9A over 11. So, he spent 3 over 8 of this amount, that is 9A over 11, on rent. So, before he started to spend on rent, he had 9A over 11 on him. And he spent 3 over 8 of that on rent. So he spent 3 over 8 of the remainder after spent on food on rent. So it's going to be 3 over 8 of or times 9a over 11. Here there are no common factors to simplify out. So you multiply 3 by 9a, that will give us 27a. 11, 8 by 11, that will give us 88. So this is the amount he spent on rent. So after spent on rent, the remainder will be the amount that he had before he spent on rent, which is the amount after spending on food. We know that the amount he had before spending on rent will be 9a over 11, the same as the amount after spending on food. Then this is the amount he spent on food. So if you want the remainder, 
is the amount he had after spending on food, which is 9a over 11, minus the amount he spent on rent, which we have found here to be 27a over 88. So in actual sense, before he began spending on rent, he had 9a over 11 on him. Then he spent 27a over 88 on rent. So if you want the amount left, it's going to be 9a over 11 minus 27a over 88. LCM for 11 and 88 is 88. So from here, we are going to have 88 divided by 11, which is 8 times 9a. Which you have here, so you have 8 times 9a, then minus 88 divided by 88 is 1 times 27a. We have that here. 8 times 9 will give us 27. So we have 8 times 9a giving us 27a. Minus 1 times 27 will give us 20. Sorry, 8 times 9 will give us 72. So we have 8 times 9a giving us 72a. Then minus 1 times 27 will give us 27. So 1 times 27a will give us 27a divided by 88. 72a minus 27a will give us 45a over then we bring the division sign and over 88. So after spending on rent, the amount that he has on him, that's the, rem the remainder before he goes on to his next expenditure, is 45A over 88. Then the question told us that he spent 1 over 9 of this amount. The amount we are referring to here is 45A over 88. He spent 1 over 9 of that on books. So before he started spending on books, the amount he had on him was 45A over 88. The question says that he spent 1 over 9 of this on books. So 1 over 9 of the remaining after spend on rent. The remainder after spend on rent is 45A over 88. So from here we simplify. So 9 can cancel 45. 5. 9 will cancel 45 for us to get five so you have one over one nine has cancelled itself one so one over one times now will cancel 45 five times so five over 88 so 5a over 88 from here we know that this will give us 5a divided by 88 so this is the amount he spent on books remember that the amount he had before spending on books was 45a minus 88 that was the amount of money he had before spending on books. Then he spent 5A over 88 on books. So if you want the remainder after spending on books, it will be the amount he had before spending on books, which is the remainder after spending on rent, minus the amount he had he spent on books. The amount he had before spending on books was 45, is 45A over 88. The amount he spent on books is 5a over 88. So from here, LCM of 88 and 88 is already 88. So 88 divided by 88 will give us 1 times 45a will give us 45a, then minus 88 divided by 88 will give us 1 times 5a will give us 5a. So we have 45a minus 5a will give us 40a divided by 88. So from here, we can simplify further. So 5 will cancel 40, 5, 8 will cancel 40, 5 times, and it will cancel 8, 8, 11 times. So we have 5 over 11a. So this is simplified to the, to the simplest form. So this is broken down to the simplest form to get 5a over 11. So we can say that in terms of fractions, the amount of money left after spending on books, because we can see from here that after spending on books, he has 5a over 11. The question to that asks that, in terms of actual money, the amount of money he had after spending on books is 10 Ghana cities. We have found that in terms of fractions, the amount of money he had after spending on books is 5a over 11. So we can equate these two. So we equate 5a over 11 to 10. We multiply both sides by 11. So we multiply this side here by 11. We multiply this side here by 11. So 11 will cancel 11 to give us 5a. Then we, from here we have 11 times 10. 
you divide here by 5 you divide here by 5 since you want to make a the subject so you divide here by 5 you divide here by 5 11 times 10 will give us 110 divided by 5 so you have 8 to be equal to 110 divided by 5 110 divided by 5 will give us 22 so a is 22 so his weekly allowance is 22 so we can say that Kweku's weekly allowance is 22 Ghana cities since A is the Kweku's weekly allowance. The question told us to find the amount of money left after spending on rent. You know that the amount of money left, so the question told us to find the amount of money he spent on rent. The amount of money he spent on rent is 27A over 88. You have found A to be 22. To be 22 so we place a with 22 so we have 27 times 22 divided by 88 27 times 22 will give us 594 we divide that by 88 and that will give us 6.75 so we can see that therefore if we spent six Ghana cities 6.75 Ghana cities on rent or six Ghana cities 75 pesos on rent then he told us once again to find the amount of money he spent on books. The amount of money he spent on books was 5A over 88. That is in terms of fraction. We have now found A to be 22. So we place A with 22. So 5 times 22 divided by 88. 5 times 22 is 110. We divide that by 88 and that is giving us 1.25. So we can say that he spent... 1.25 Ghana cities on books or 1 Ghana cities 25 pesos on books Thank you for watching this video This is the final video on fractions Take more examples on fractions adding subtraction and division of fractions and Try your hands on more questions about solving practical problems involving fractions and use the principles we used in this video. If you have any problem with any of the questions, interact with me on Facebook at Mass Center and on Instagram at Mass Center underscore SHS and I'll help you to understand it. Bye bye.